Well, Mark, here we are, uh, approaching June. Cricket season well underway. Three yeah. weeks ago we won the championship. Bet you were hoping for a quiet summer. Yeah, a quiet summer at Pompey. That's a bit of a contradiction in terms. But no, yes, and it's, it's obviously with a lot going on. Obviously with Paul and the couple we're in the middle of the due diligence with the takeover. So yeah, I don't think we're going to have a very quiet summer. Right, come on, expand on Paul Cook. There's plenty of people out there saying what's 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 happening, what's going on, what's occurring. Um, yeah, listen, I think people tend to overcomplicate things, you know, and, and read too much into, you know, they hear little whispers here, whispers there, and then read too much into it. Um, football's a, a very fluid business these days. Um, you know, and I, I've read a lot, and people talk about loyalty to Paul, and, and it goes, and it's the same with, with managers, sorry, um, loyalty from from Paul to the club, and the same with players' loyalty and that. But I, I've said for a while now, you just got we've just got to get used to this world that we live in, where if people are not doing well, whether that be a player or a manager, you know, there's a temptation for for clubs and fans to get on their backs and want them out. Um, so there's no real loyalty that way. Um, and when players and managers do well and then look for other opportunities, you know. Um, there's deemed to be no loyalty that way. So I just, I just think it's the world that we live in now. I wouldn't be, you know, Paul came here. He did, he, he's done what he was brought in to do. You know, you'll have to ask Paul the reasons why he left because that's not really for me to comment. But all I can say is he come in, he did a job, um, a very good job. He got us promoted. He's left us with a decent squad. And as far as I'm concerned, he moves on with my best wishes and that of the club, you know, uh, I think it's a shame how it's unravelled the last few weeks, you know, in, in regards of him, him leaving. But with social media now and whatever, everything gets played out in public. You, you need to try and keep as much as you can under wraps and in-house. And previously you could do that. But now every little thing gets, you know, played out in the public domain. And, and people take sides, you know, which is wrong. And, but we just have to accept the fact that as a club, we, we did what we felt we could you know, um, and Paul has done what he felt he needs to do, you know, for his future career. He, he's come from, you know, he's, he's, he's northern based. Come in, he did the job. Maybe he's looking for a new project. Um, you know, obviously, we are in the middle of a takeover, like it or not. Um, and there's, and that isn't any of the blame for this, by the way. And, that, and, and I've read comments on that, which is upsetting, you know, people trying to blame a current ownership model, people trying to blame Michael Eisner, you know, and the Tornanti group for it. But the reality is, whoever was in charge, we will be running this club with under as we've done for four years, under mm. sound financial disciplines, you know. We we will go to a certain level for, for any particular person that we think is right for that person. If they don't think that's right, then they're perfectly entitled, you know, subject to compensation being paid, to go then to, to look for other opportunities. That, that's life, that's the way we live in. You know, that, that's footballers, that's managers, that's staff now at a lot of football clubs. All exactly the same, it's very transient. So I'm not too, like people going, how are you feeling, are you all right? I'm feeling great, it's football. You know, mm -hmm. it's disappointing, I love Paul. I've had two great years with him. You, you just have to take a balanced view and respect his, his decision-making process on it. Are you happy that the club have done everything in I'm, their power to keep him? I'm, I'm totally happy that we have done everything that we can to keep Paul Cook. Mm. Okay, As I said, that might not be what Paul or Liam or anyone else wanted, but I'm not knocking them for that. I'm just saying that we have spent four years, you know, working diligently under, you know, with, uh, in my mind, a fantastic financial operation model for the football club, which is why it was so attractive to Michael coming in. Now, after four years, we're not suddenly going to go and blow it all at a wild night at the casino betting on red and black. You know, that's not, not what we're going to do. You know, everything that we do is structured. There's a rationale behind it. There's a reason behind it. We have limits. You know, we will, we will continue under the existing ownership model. Or if, if we go through the period of due diligence, is right, Michael comes in, we'll still be running that side of it responsibly and that's what I believe the fans want. Mm -hmm. Now Ernie on Facebook asks a pertinent question is it true that a director of football is to be appointed? I think you've been at pains to say that, that isn't the case. No, that, that is 100% not true. In the future there may be restructuring. 
I've said all along, you know, even in the current ownership, I would personally like a development squad. Mm. And something I think if we're going to be developing players and that, you have to have a development squad because the gap between the, the youth team at 18 to, to breaking through for the first team is too great. Yeah, and I think there is, if that is the model we, we want to pursue, both under the existing model and, and potentially under Michael Eisner, which I personally as a strategy would recommend a lot of the most successful clubs have that strategy then you might have to have someone that coordinates that mm. now that's not necessarily what i would call a director of football no because there's a director of football at certain clubs means someone who effectively sits above the manager mm. oversees the first team and then you know acts as the link between the first team and the board mm. in my opinion and you know that never never works because it's a threat to the manager. That was that's never ever. But when you're considering all different options for the future, i.e., do we want to take the the academy from category three to category two, you know, to various footballing decisions, you have to look at every decision. And if you have an academy and a development squad and a first team squad, personally, if if you ask my recommendation, you would have to have someone needed to coordinate that but more as an assistant to all three managers, if that, if that makes sense. Mm. And, I mean, listen, I know no one's good. There's, there's a certain club not a million miles away from here who, who has someone in that position that does an absolutely amazing job. He's never any threat to the manager, but he is an, an exceptional person to have around the club just to coordinate the use of the club's facilities in regards of, of your physio department, in regards of your analyst, someone that just coordinates everything, you know, has, has a clear structure to what's going on and pulls the three managers together. But again, that's just part of strategy and thinking for the future. There's no decisions being made, but it's just, now we're in League One, our first priority was always getting out of League Two into League One. Now the second strategy is, let's build again for the future. And that is something, personally, I would like to go to the future. Something I think Paul wanted as well. So there's nothing new in that. No. But the, if, if you're talking about, is there any plans or any under the current ownership model or, or potentially the new one to bring in a director of football that sits above the manager and pulls the ball? Never. No, there's not. So for Paul Cook, it was a black and white decision. Should I stay? Should I go? Should I stay or should I go? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Because the same, there's now two distinctive camps. One that says he, he said two weeks ago that he was never to leave this club only for Liverpool. And there's another camp that says, look, anybody in his position would do the same thing for, for more money. Yeah. But again, it's two camps. I mean, it's just sometimes in life there's two rights. You know, it doesn't have to be a right and a wrong. Um, and, and as I say, it's, all I, I want to concentrate on is we've had two fantastic years with Paul Cook as a manager. You know, he's, he's done his job. No one can deny that. Again, that's another fact. And we move on. We'll evolve as a football club. Mm. And, and, you know, from my experiences that I've learned from Paul, I've become a better chief exec. You know, all that comes into the pot. We've got some really good players, you know, he's developed players through. I think we've got some really good assets in the football side of the business generally. And we move on to the next level. It's, mm. To me, it's great. You know, it's just part of the evolution process of, of a football club. And we will continue to evolve and we will continue to get stronger. And I can't really dwell too much on the past. I have to concentrate now on the future. And already my attentions are turning to that. Right, it may have escaped people's notice with all that, but there's been a takeover as well this summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the, the vote obviously was heavily in favour of, of Michael coming in and investing in the club. Um, again, part of the evolution process of the club. All I can say is we will keep improving. We, we will keep growing stronger um, and we will keep evolving both on and off the pitch. So let's move forward. Carl on Instagram. How quickly will Fratton Park upgrades be getting underway? Once the takeover is completed, well, I would assume before the takeover. No, there's always, we was clear prior to, to the vote that, you know, there was a sum put aside, um, the remaining money that was in the escrow account. All that work's already commenced. Um, it's not a lot of what you will see. It's really like not, um, I'm going to put it, not romantic work where, you know, you're going to see the benefits of it. But it's a lot of essential infrastructure works to do with like wiring and, you know, support beams and columns and, and fire upgrading, you know, that type of thing. So it's not anything someone's going to come in and go, wow, look at that shiny new section. It's more practical things that, that needed to be done just to ensure future safety and security mm. of, of our supporters. Mm. Multiple fans, what are the short 
long-term aims for the Academy, Michael Eisner and family seem keen to make it a priority going forward. Yeah, I think, look, my early discussions with them and everything they said in the lead-up to the vote leads me to believe that, that they're not going to come in and, and, as I say, gamble everything that we've, we've worked so hard to achieve over the last four years on and off the pitch, you know, on having a wild night in the casino, a, a roulette table. So I think that they are very, very... If you look at everything they've ever done, both with Ton Ante and Michael with his previous business um, experiences, you know, and, and running of some big corporations, there's always been a real defined structure to everything that he's done. The plan is going to be, you know, we're going to try and remain self-sustainable operationally. Um, so, you know, you could say, oh, well, I thought he was going to put loads of money in the club. Well, there's a diff- this is where supporters need to get the difference. There's the operational running of the business, i.e., are we, look, clubs, you know, I can na- name a host of them. I won't because it's not for any individual clubs, but it's, it's the majority of clubs are prepared to lose a million to the championship up to 20, 30, 40 million per year on the operational side of the business, i.e. the operating profit and loss. That's not the model either the existing ownership or, or Michael wants to pursue. So the, then there's the other side of, of the coin, which is investment, you know, which is the real crux of the matter. Is Michael prepared to invest in the long-term, mid to long-term future of the club by way of the academy, by way of infrastructure, by way of um, improvements to the training ground, by way of improvements to Fratton Park, 100% yes. So he's willing to invest heavily from what I believe and everything that he said in, during, during the, um, the, the lead up to the vote, that that is where the investment will be going on making Pompey you know, um, self-sustainable and a lot of that money needs to be front-ended i.e so again money fratton park you know the training ground improvements in the academy you know that type of investment season after next hopefully you know possibly a development squad so they'll be all them investments but operationally there's there's not going to be any you know just just gambling the money away and being frivolous mm. we just we've just throwing it at things that there is no real long-term investment so listen it's the model this and this was why it was always so appealing to me personally in that Pompey have been bit so many times you, you can't have it both ways if, if you want someone just to come in and start throwing money here there get the club back into debt because ultimately whether it's Michael putting the money in or whoever you know that that is a, a debt Mm. No, or it's a loan. That's how businessmen work, yeah? Mm. Did he want to do that? No. Does he want to invest long-term in the future investment to, to give us the tools to make ourselves self-sustainable when we do get, hopefully, back into the championship at some time in the future and beyond? Yes, I believe that is his plan, and I believe that's the sensible one, and I believe it's the one that Pompey fans want. And I, I think you're right there. I just reiterate that they would back that, I think, having yeah. past experiences, what they are. And, 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 and what I liked about Michael during his whole process, he never over-promised. No. The biggest problem I'm going to have, and, and it's great I'm speaking to you today, and, and we'll keep saying it, is we've just got to manage expectations. Mm. Yeah, I thought Michael did do that, in the, in the lead up, you know, he was very honest. He never once spoke about throwing loads of money and signing big players. And it was never about that. It was always about building the infrastructure and making Pompey, you know, a really, really great club with a great building on the foundations that we'd already built. And then because of that, being able then to invest heavily in in the playing side of the budget, but off of the money that we're earning because commercially we've got a lot better because Fratton Park's a lot safer. Hopefully we can see some increases in capacity in the future. So all them different things, bringing kids through to the academy, having a development squad. So all these issues, and not one of them exclusively is going to make the difference, but taken as a package will make us stronger so that when we do arrive in the championship or if we stay in League One, then at least our budget is self-sustainable and it will continue to grow year on year on the back of that invest- them investment. And let's be clear, the honesty you speak about is th- that that won the vote. Exactly right. Yeah, and as I said to you, the easiest thing for him to, to have said was, I'm going to come in, I'm going to blow this league away, I'm going to pump money into mm. you know this player, that short-term player. Short-term popularity. He yeah. could have got short-term popularity. He never did that. At the Guildhall, we made that clear and said, look, if you want someone to do that, 
I'm not your guy. Mm. So all I'm going to be doing is just repeating. And, and Pompey fans are brilliant. They've been that route. They've been burned. We're not going that route. And I'll say again, that's what made, for me, Michael so appealing. Because mm. even billionaires, and I can name a high-profile one now, have gone in to clubs, got carried away. Mm. Billionaires don't like losing 10s, 20, 30, 40 million pound a year. They soon get fed up with it. Mm. And if you're not achieving success as well, and you're getting stick for doing that, you know, that's when the relationship goes south. You know, there's an implosion. That will not happen here. I'm, I'm 100% convinced of that. Nice, gentle one for you on the back of that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> An underarm. <laughs> <laughs> Mike on Facebook, Daisy well, Cutter. Will yeah, the Daisy shareholders' Bowen. names on the back of the North Stand be staying, especially looking to head to any future redevelopment of the I, stand? I, I cannot see any way, shape or form them, them names will not be staying. No. So they'll always be... They'll always be. Now, listen, if there's a development in the future and that doesn't fit, then there will be another wall where... Um, even if it's engraved in, in a different format to fit with the style of any d new development, then that, that will take place. For, forever and a day, the shareholders that saved this club need to be remembered mm. and respected, you know, and, and, you know, given that special place, 100%. Yeah. Michael on Facebook, what revenue streams are Michael Eisner and his family looking at expanding, creating to grow financially? I think that... One of the things we've, we've always tried to do here since, you know, for the last four years is, is to an element, save costs as well as trying to maximise the revenue what we got in. I, I would assume, I, th I think, you know, Michael's a revenue grower. So there's a lot of things like in a few months time, as an example, um, we're going to be launching iPlayer, mm. which will enable fans in foreign countries to be able to view live TV games. So. As an example, where we would have had the, the you know, the one camera, and we might have to start for this because it's, it's getting so near to the start of the season. Um, so if I give an example of, of that as a revenue stream, you know, under what we can afford at the minute in regards of investment, it would have been a simple one camera, record the game, turn it off at half time, you know, start the tape at the, set, the start of the second half, people watch the game, end of story. Mm. I know that, you know, my thinking is that this can be expanded on with maybe more cameras, you know, maybe half-time discussions, you know, in a studio, that type of thing. So I believe that's a specific area, but you could replicate that over the club where I think Michael and his team will look at that and go, well, look, we know it's going to cost X amount at the start, but will that result in us getting maybe another 500 subscribers and what will that work out? Over mm. the next five years, that extra revenue, does it pay for that? Does it give us more money? So that's how they're going to be looking at things in regards of return on investment. Mm. Um, where, th let's not beat around the bush. The one thing we've always struggled with, yeah, we've run, done a great job keeping the ship afloat, building the foundations, but we've never had that luxury of investing in something for a future return. No. You know, you know, and that's not a knock of anyone. We've done, we've done a great job, everyone, yeah? So I'm not knocking that but it's them type of things where he will be looking to invest they're exactly the type of area so if you spread that across the you know the the spectrum commercially um i can tell you quite a few different areas that with some investment would probably bring us in some more mid to long-term revenue they're the areas i believe he will be investing in okay and listen let's be honest he's got the expertise and he's got the, the know-how to do that yeah yeah yes. Steve on Facebook, I would imagine the club badge, identity and merchandising along with hospitality and fans match day experience would be high on the agenda. Could you tell us of your plans for these areas please? I think there's, a, there's too many individual things there to just sit and, and go through. All I can be saying is that as with any new person coming in, yeah, and you know, part of the due diligence process, I'm, I'm picking this vibe up that they will be looking at every single aspect of the business, top to bottom, improving, you know, match day experience for supporters, you know. Um, tradition and heritage was always a big thing for Michael. And mm. if you look at his previous history, specifically at Disney, um, they concentrated very heavily on that. But what they did do, they didn't rip it up and start again with tradition and history. And you don't want to do that. You just want to enhance on it, make mm. it better. Yeah. So he always tells me the story of um, like Walt Disney. Um, when he first took over Disney, he actually, everywhere he looked, there was photos of Walt Disney pickup, you know, just to make 
he was the person that started, you know, the Disney Corporation and such. So, mm. yeah, they're, they're them areas that I think he will be reverting back on in regards of our tradition and history, but using that going forward. Okay. But there was just, just a lot of questions out. I don't, again, I don't think it's going to be a case just to, to manage supporters' expectations. They're not going to come in on day one and start ripping things up and starting no. again. They've made clear that any responsible new owners come in, have a period of assessment. The club's being run in a really, really good way. Mm. So it's not like we're in free fall, we're on the verge of administration or whatever, you know. The club is being run in a very, very good way, yeah. So he will be coming in, I believe, and, and it's a sensible way from what I live, from, you know, my discussions with him. He'll come in, they'll look, they'll assess, I'll work with them on different aspects of the business, where there's investment needed, where there's changes needed. It'll all be done with consultation. You know, um, we're gonna have the advisory stroke, operation stroke, heritage board all tied into it. So everything will be done, you know, with a lot of thought behind it, no knee jerk reactions, but don't expect on day one to come in and see changes because the the downside of what I've just explained, i.e. the thought process that will go behind changes will require a lot of thought and it will require a lot of time. Okay. Now you've been asked this several times, but let's 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 ask it again. Mark on Facebook, will these monthly Q and A's continue? Oh, hundred yeah. percent, without without a shadow of a doubt. You know, and you and you know, we, we've often talked about this. We, it's not always been good months. We've had bad months. Today's mm. a bad day. You know, Paul's left us. You know, which is a shame. Blah blah blah. But I'm still here, and I think that you've got to be consistent like that. You know, with a. You've got to be prepared to sit here and, and, and do it when it's good times and the questions are quite easy. And you've got to be prepared to sit here and do it when the questions are not so easy. But I th- all I can say to you is, yeah, you've got my word. Honestly, as long as I'm the CEO of this football club, they will continue monthly. I think what you get here is people are frightened of change. We get it at supporters club meetings where they say, will our supporters meet and continue? Of course, yeah. they will. Yeah, yeah, ex- exactly the same. All I can say is, look, as long as I'm here... And I'm assuming as long as, you know, the existing board and, and Michael coming in because they both are quite actually very much aligned on their thinking of how to run a football club. Mm-hmm. Um, there's not a lot of difference there, really. Then, then it will just carry on as it is. You know, interaction is key to what we do. And it's a huge part of the success we've had here, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So, to end, one man never defined a football club. Now you're looking for a new one to come in at the helm. So that's going to preoccupy you for the next few weeks? It will. It's... Listen, it's that they always say it. it's, it's it's the biggest. Well, it's the it's the, the truest thing I'm saying in football. And there's a lot of crap sayings in football. But it's, it, this is so true. No one person is ever bigger than the football club. The football club is about the fans. It's about you. It's about Dan. It's about me. It's about Debbie on reception. It's about Tony Brown. The after. It's about so much more. Mm. You know, and we're all part of a team. No one person is bigger than the team. Yeah. So. However, the, the manager is obviously a very, very important person at a football club. You know, that goes without saying. So, you know, we've already started looking, you know, in any business, you, you, you don't wait for the inevitable to happen. You know, you're already pre-planning. So there's been, for, a, for a, quite a few days now, I've been working on, on a contingency for that already. And I've been working with the board. They're fully aware of it. And um, I, th- I personally think for the... For the where we are as a club at the minute, it is important that we do, just to try and get someone in as quickly as possible. Is the key word for next season and a new division consolidation? Yes, so I don't always like that word because that takes away ambition. But I think if you look at a lot of clubs when they do get taken over, there there follows a period of turmoil, um, and I'm really, really personally very keen that we don't we don't have that turmoil. We keep continue to, to grow as we have done we have bumps along the way i.e Paul leaving but we, we just get over them bumps and we carry on again and I'm sure that will be the case so th- there will be in my opinion next next season whenever you go up a level there's always um, a, a trying to find your feet you know some players at some clubs suit the, the division above better others don't so you could go up as champions in league two with a set of players that don't fit particularly well in League One. Likewise, you could go up via the playoffs in League Two, but have a set of players that fit really well in League One. You know, so there's just because we was champions doesn't mean we're gonna, 
you know, be higher next year in League One than the other League Two teams. It's a it's a start of a new season and that. But um, yeah, I think it's important we go up there. You know, we do find the level consolidation stability is absolutely key. But you know, with an element of of ambition as well. So, um, but I think next season will be a very very exciting season for us both on and off the pitch. I'm really looking forward to it. Well, I'd love to say uh, now have a quiet summer, but <laughs> invariably it won't be. So I don't I think it will be, but it never is in football, you know. And uh, I think when the time comes, I've always said this: if you've got time to go around the golf course, you shouldn't you shouldn't be a CEO. <laughs> and I never play golf, so no, I, well, I was going to so. bring that up. But I've never had time for that. So, uh, yeah, okay, well, yeah. thank you for your All honesty right. once thank more. Thank you very much. Cheers, Johnny.